Hi, I'm Divya. I'm, I work as a PM in Microsoft. And today I'm going to walk you through, um, based on my personal experience, of how to ship a V1 product. Um, I'm sure you're from the product school. You would have understand, you have a great understanding of uh, how to build a product of features and things like that. But I'm going to talk something really different. Like if you imagine you want to ship a, a product that is not there in the market um, and it's a V1 version, um, then what are the different checklists or the tips and tricks that you need to adopt in order to launch the product? Um, so with that, um, a quick biography about me. Um, um, as I mentioned, I'm a PM with Microsoft. Uh, I have uh, worked on various areas of the product, like 18 years of experience. I've worked on ERP, CRM uh, technologies, client server technologies, um, down to cloud and digital modernization. Uh, so yeah, with all my practical experience, I have jotted down a, a, a checklist to share with all the fellow PMs here so that uh, we can all learn and grow together. Um, challenges on a, on a V1 on product. Um, basically, you need to understand who is it for, why is it important, uh, what value am I building, how is it that is different from the other products, what are the current in-market products that I'm providing, are they really not working well, not working well, uh, where does my product fit into the market demography, and, and, and what's your goal, what's the purpose of your product, it's very important, and then revenue projection, like I would say that comes last, first, you need to really understand what pain you're going to solve, uh, what value prop you're going to give. Then you can think about, you know, uh, uh, revenue, which I'm sure you have to meet your stakeholders requirement. But yes, make sure that you uh, are very confident about your product. Uh, the checklist, it's about 15 checklists. Um, but if you, if you follow this, I think um, you will not feel that burden. But you know, 15 is quite a lot, but yeah, it's very important that you're not delivering a feature, you're delivering an entire product to a market. So, yeah. So let me get started with first on analyzing your market. You really need to understand your market costs. Uh, to create a successful product launch, uh, you have to create focus groups, you have to partner with your product marketing team. Um, in uh, The beauty of uh, being in a startup is you know, you get to do everything. You, you get to become a product manager. You can become a marketing manager. You get to do your own campaigning. You get to do your customers. But if you're part of your a big corporation where you have designated, teams, you know, product marketing, you have sales and inside sales, then you will have to partner closely with them, conduct a lot of analysis, understand your competitors. Um, you know, you know what what merits and demerits of those in-market products are, um, again, validate your purpose. Like after doing all that uh, research, again, check, okay, is my, is what I'm building, is that going to deliver value to our customers? And, and inform your stakeholders, now that you have identified a market opportunity and you're, you're very excited, identify your stakeholders. Like, Form a small core team, a V team that comprises of your, you know, your PMs, your fellow PMs, your uh, engineering managers, your dev managers, um, and, and not only your that forms the core team because you're going to work day in and day out with them. Your print planning, your execution, your testing. So you all have to be like one team. Now, along with this core team, you need to bring your supporting team because this is all about go to market right you need to make sure you have the right infrastructure uh, team you have your sales marketing you know buy off you have your um, your support uh, support team your operations team your your product dependency sometimes you're dependent on another team to build something uh, you know so you need to make sure who those dependencies are so form a, a form a supporting team at a very high level and then product marketing team, as I mentioned, they were they will be like very very early on, even to even analyze whether this this V one is in a good fit, right? So once you identify it and you're bringing them right at the beginning, 
you're bringing them along uh, in this journey and then finally your cab team that is customer advisory board and they are your uh, your representation of your market so pick a diverse cab team right say your product is a generic product right uh, then try to identify a cab where you have a segment a vertical segment where a, a, a customer from a hospital industry a customer from a retail from supply chain and so forth and has build as much diversity as possible so you get uh, there is feedback uh, now that you formed your stakeholders the next important thing that we usually ignore um, and that comes and bites us uh, once we you know become big and we operationalize you know is not understanding your local laws and regulatory compliance requirements um you must have that as part of your design your the industry today is all about you know foundation of built on the foundation of the security trust privacy you have to understand your local uh, regulatory laws um, such as like gdpr uh, or um, european union data uh privacy and so forth so you have to make sure that you understand each geographical uh, um, laws and regulations and should be part uh, of your core design and make sure you partner and you bring your dev team along because you are engineering your your compliance as part of your product feature the the, the this is important because um you know, the customer wants to make sure their data are not being used for marketing or for are not being sold to another companies um it's their privacy so they want to take control of the data they need to understand where the data is stored who is processing who is handling them um and 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 there are some restrictions where you know uh, you we cannot store a data outside of the geographical boundary of their presence so you, so if a customer is in europe you cannot store the data in united states right uh, so understand all of that and make sure where the data needs to be stored and processed and handled once you identify stakeholders you understand your regulatory laws build a prototype because quite often what happens is without even building a pilot or a prototype we go you know big bang on uh, the schedule we start uh, pumping money and then you discover things the roadblocks and and that slides the deadline right because you are as a v1 uh, we have to be very what you call um, you don't uh, it, it uh, usually in big companies you don't uh, market about v1 until it comes out right so you need to be very careful in um, in uh, building that um, Uh, that closeness or uh, keeping it little secretive about what you're launching you have to make sure the prototype uh, will work uh, by by gathering lots of feedbacks from the marketing and and the design team um sign an nda with your customers your cap team to make sure that your ideas are being validated and um and and we are sharing with the stakeholders make sure that whatever idea that you have uh, you have built a small prototype you have identified unknown unknowns well in advance you have your hypothesis explored and you have done your basic alpha test um so please 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 i can't emphasize have a draft customer experience model in place before embarking in the big bang uh, project once you identified your prototype you have you know identified your roadblocks in advance um you know and then you can carve a path okay which path should i take like uh, you know path a path b path c uh, all of that and once you have identified okay now i have the high confidence on which path now i'm going to define what is my minimal viable product is going to be and what are my okrs that is my objective key results um without that um that vision of what your mvp is going to look like and how are you even going to progress an mvp it's not necessary that you want to build a big bang product and release it you can release in phase 
right? And the trick is you have to divide your MVP into uh, into sub features where the the, the feature set itself is whole enough for a customer to go use it um, and they realize its value and they provide feedback, right? So, uh, so, so make sure that you divide your product into those milestones confined to a feature set. And the feature set must be test ready. And it, uh, and it, and it has undergone a lot of iteration uh, intermediate. And uh, OKS is super important because if you don't know what your success metrics is going to look like, then you will not be able to track your success. So, um, or you will not be able to track your progression back. So uh, make sure that you have uh, an easy to measure your key results. For example, your key results will be um, I want to. I, like, I want to launch this product in the United States, for example. And I want to capture 60% of my consumer market. Um, what is a consumer market? Define that, right? Uh, or you want to attract customers who are like corporate customers. Then identify how many big corporate customers are in that region and what percentage you're going to, going to attract those those pets. So, once you define all of that population and tell what is your success going to be, like success can be uh, like how much of um, your uh, usage metrics going to look like, um, or how am I making sure that I will be 99.9% of the time available, um, how reliability index is going to look like. So all of that measurable targets start tracking. And then be open on your features and your design. Your foundation should be in such a way that um, you should be able to fail fast, learn from it, and move on, right? Uh, your, and your foundation should not change a lot. That's why I said make sure that early on you have a very strong um, security, trust, and privacy inbuilt, right? Um, because those are the uh, external factors that will change your 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 course. So make sure you have it as part of your design. And um, based on the features that you're iterating, right? Um, over the course, you may find that okay, that feature it didn't go well. The customers gave us feedback. Then you have to have uh, a ability to course correct, get their feedback immediately, and share it with your devs. The dev team, uh, address it, prioritize it, and release the next iteration. So that open to flexible design is super important. You don't need to be, uh, um, you know, don't, you don't need to understand or write coding, but at least, you know, you need to have the business and the technology and the te architecture uh, really well so that you are the voice for your dev team. And you are a customer for your devs, so make sure that you have that uh, a holistic understanding of the technology and business and the customer. Plan your infrastructure. So it's not just releasing features; it's the entire uh, infrastructure that goes along with it, right? Because uh, you need to have make sure, like if I'm if you're planning to launch globally, then you don't want to day one release the product across the globe right you need you need to first test it out in one region um, and slowly scale to other regions so probably my my uh, recommendation is start small pick one region where you are where you're comfortable with where your most of your cab audiences are uh, where you make sure that your supply chain and all of that you have you have good connection so you know that okay this region is easy to land and all that so pick the that region uh if you're planning to get into you know cloud model then identify which data center which cloud that you would love to go uh, what type of monitoring that you will have to build and security this i cannot emphasize security by design is is the new trend um every feature that you build must have inbuilt security in place. For example, 
you need to have the right uh, role uh, role based access control you need to have your uh, the governance model for customer data um, all of that so plan your infrastructure well ahead um dependencies now this is a very important checklist because from my experience this can make or break your your go to market like if if it's not just your dependency a dependency team can be dependent on another dependency right so there is a there is a chain of dependencies and if you are betting your entire plan based on those dependencies then you need to make sure that you have a line of sight of your dependency um you have to as a product owner you own your destiny so you have to take control of your destiny so you need to talk to those dependencies and their dependencies get them into a room and understand that pulse like are they really confident to deliver their part and um if they say no like that is one soft skill that you need to have as a pm right it's not just building your features it's about influencing your audience influencing your your teams on what product you are building what value prop it is and why it is urgent to go to market by this deadline right so you have to paint the picture and sell your vision to all the audiences so that they buy off on your plan and they can commit to a timeline right once they commit to a timeline then you can do a plan you can add those timelines into your plan so that you can come up with a realistic schedule so uh, dependencies don't underestimate um and if the if you are not confident with dependency have a plan b in place right uh, so if that team is not ready have a work around have that in your back pocket you don't have to share it with them but always have that in your back pocket lastly bring your stakeholders along your leadership along you need to manage up you need to manage sideways so uh, all of that goes is a part and parcel of of a pm's life track risk um now that you got the pulse from dependency teams right um and you also have your mvps you know exactly how the progression of your product is going to be then you start putting together a project plan it may not be like set in stone you can have like wiggle rooms but start somewhere start putting a plan um and put all your lego blocks together and um identify your internal stakeholders like like you have to give deadlines to your dev team otherwise um you know things can go forever so you need to make sure there is a time restricted um uh, you know schedule and you 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 partner with them very closely and engage into testing as soon as possible being a pm have to do your testing of your product you need to really understand the bugs the customer experience what will work what will not work you can start a dog food experiment with your stakeholders right you test your own product you understand you get the bugs report the bugs as soon as possible once your dog food and and your dog food uh, experience is, is good then you open up uh, to your stakeholders or to your cab audience right and um, and start showing your demo get their feedback do some regular check-ins even with the cab the customers are busy they have their own deadline right uh, set expectations with them to you know to do testing and commit get some commitment from them follow up with them uh, on a regular basis you know pre covid i used to travel to customer sites we used to have workshops and get feedback now with uh covid you know see if you can set up online time with with the, with the customers don't exceed more than an hour or two otherwise you will not get their attention uh but do some regular check-ins and get their feedback um maintain risk register like the risk register can comprise of your dependency keeping or your bugs immense bugs you never thought that uh, this this product uh, you know was built in a certain way but customers expect us of different 
start recording all of that um and every risk that you have identify a mitigation now say for example you start getting feedback where the customers are saying oh i thought i would get that but i know i only got this so understand between what what is it is it really required to build or is that a wish list right and and that's a slippery slope you don't want to take up scope more than what you had envisioned because sometimes your gut and your data analysis the the first um analysis and the and the feedback that you would have got is actually probably would be a good good setup and you don't want to get all of these different noises so and that we can delay delay the plan so make sure you identify all of those record all of those feedbacks but question um or retest with other customers and validate that you are getting similar feedback uh, put them in your risk register prioritize them stack rank them triage them um and 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 uh, and see if there is a workaround consult with your dev team and your stakeholders to see if there is a workaround available build a diverse team now that you have identified an mvp you you have identified dependencies you have put a schedule build a diverse team diverse in terms of each team member has a superpower identify the superpower like i am good at product design i'm good at system design my peer uh, is very good in testing and validating bugs um the other peer is very good in writing blogs so identify um a diverse team member and delegate work so that you know each one finds that uh, that authority and ownership and they, and they feel you know very uh, accomplished because now they're getting each each of them has has an idea to to work on um release schedules now that you have identified your team you have your mvp is you know your dependencies you start to get feedback put together a release their schedule so put a release schedule that that you can achieve be make build it real realistic like don't 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 get into this pressure external pressures or internal leadership pressures because uh you are in a position you are the you are the captain of the ship you know exactly what roadblocks what uh, what you know uh, roadblocks ahead and you know exactly uh, the dependency is going to slip because you are doing the regular check ins so build a realistic schedule and put some buffers in it right um, it's okay to under promise and then over deliver um, but but you know it's put some internal buffers so that you don't make a norm like keeping deadlines should not be a norm so uh and that means you as a product manager um uh, along with features and and design and customer feedback and analysis you have to do check ins with with your devs you have to go hand in hand with them and work with them in the sprint plan uh in the prioritization uh start activating all your listening channels so that you continuously get feedback from different sources you have a risk register that is always men kept up to date and you also start creating your your uh, objective key results your okrs and metrics and kpis so that on day 0 of your product launch you already have the telemetry flowing in you know how the the product is um is, is gearing towards the towards the direction that you intended to do and so forth um continuous feedback like i mentioned you want to start with dog food and then slowly with your cap team you're starting your something called your private preview right you want to invite your your customers uh, and uh, start getting their feedback record the feedback um and and surveys you can send surveys or right after the testing and or you can do open ended interview questions or then your feature set you can have a live display part so get all of those feedback as soon as possible and start triaging them on a weekly or a, as as regular as you can so now that you got your feedbacks coming in you have been getting your your doing regular check ins with your teams you know how your dev team is doing against the sprint plan um you 
you basically now have a long list of changes, right? And uh, as I mentioned, once we are into the project, these are the different things that can easily deviate you from the plan. And you have to be like strong. You have to make sure you're recording all the features, all the feedback, all the risks together. And then you have one list. And that one list, you basically start consulting with your change management board. Now, who is your change management? Anybody who is going to be part of your, your launch, that is your dev manager, it can be your, um, you know, your support team, your operations team, supply chain team, uh, your, your um, from your uh, compliance team, right? Or your legal team, marketing, sales, everybody, put them in, the, in, a, in one room and go through all of those risks and the features and the type of bugs you are receiving and validate and say, hey, I believe all of these are P0, P1, P2. Now for us to get into the next iteration, I would recommend that we address all the P0s and P1s and P2, P3 would be part of a backlog. So that way, get their buy-in so that everybody unanimously agree um, on what we are trying to address. And um, once they all agree, and uh, then you basically get into your uh, release plan to make sure that all of these changes are carefully controlled, distilled, and uh, diagnosed, and, and then being added into your project plan. Operational model. Now, you you have started with your MVP, you have opened up to a, a private preview of your selected customers, and now it's successful. Right? Region A, you, you released to a certain region, you got great feedback, now it's time to expand. Now, this you cannot scale with this, with this type of core team and your stakeholder, right? Now you have to start delegating it. Um, from each of your core team or the supporting team that you identified as part of your stakeholders early on, uh, now you have to now you know talk to them and say, hey, I'm going to delegate support responsibility to you. So start hiring and forming a team of support uh, of a support model, or you will start talking to your supply chain team and say, hey, I'm going to expand across the globe. So start uh, ordering your infrastructure, your hardware, or your software licenses and whatnot start delegating to them. So put roles and responsibilities um, and and also understand what their principle of operation is. Like support will say, okay, I'm ready to support 24 bar 7. Um, I will support in US and India time zone. So understand all of them um, and work with them so that you being the epicenter or the captain of the ship, you are of building that operational model. Eventualize the launch. Uh, now that you have framed how the operation is going to look like, you know, identify team members, you have built a team for you and with your supporting team, uh, you understand all the, the, uh, the regulatory compliance, you know exactly how your dependency teams are doing. Now they're not doing. You are now comfortable in declaring a date and make it public, right? Um, so this is a point time where you have got enough feedback, you know exactly what works, customer like it, dislike it, and all that. You know, their engineering is all ready, but the infrastructure monitoring, reliability monitoring, support model is in place. Then you start evangelizing the launch by partnering with your product marketing. So uh, there are different ways in which you can evangelize, you can go to social media, blogs, uh, you can lead your leadership can start writing uh, an announcement, um, and and these are the ways in which you can engage and, and you can start uh, inviting customers for uh, beyond your cab team. You can start inviting attracted customers um, and and put your product brochure in place where you talk about your vision, your product, value prop, and uh, all of that. So as much as possible, build a campaign. Uh, so, and, and do a product reach out so that the more usage uh, you get, the better it is for you to uh, to launch the product. And once you have evangelized 
then you start tracking the usage. Remember, I told you the earlier slide as part of your MVP and as part of your release plan. Make sure with your devs, you already have stories that talk about how to track metrics, how to track usage, how to monitor your availability and reliability, your support tools. Are they ready? Right. So all of that must be part of your early release plan. That here at this point, it should be like the, the pipeline is built and the data starts coming in, and you start seeing your usage. Uh, they're doing. At what point are they converting? Like you have to have that customer lifecycle in mind. Customers who are, you know, logging in and they use the product. They, they registered, but they didn't use. Or they used, but they canceled. They used for a certain amount of point on the time, and then they, they canceled after like 90 days. Um, so you need to understand the customer's journey, right? Um, and those telemetry must be lighted up well in advance. So you really need to get into the details around why the customer hit the cancel button, even without doing it. Um, why did the customer use the product but they deleted after 90 days which segment of the customers are you continuing to use the product did they really grow after that and they continue to use the same product uh, or the same feature set from day zero so all of that categorize it so you understand your customers better and another uh, important uh, listening system that i really love is your support that the tickets a very important source of um, a source of listening where you know exactly where the customer hit the roadblock and why they had to create a ticket and how should you improve on those product experience. Once you have built your support model and your uh, uh, you know your your operational model um, and you have this listening systems ready, start building your backlog. You as a PM, you need to be at least six to six months to one year ahead of your customers, right? Because that's how you're gonna, you know, keep your customers, um, you know, the, the the anticipation is like, you keep the customer's anticipation, uh, you keep your dev team involved because, we need to be excited. Everybody needs to be excited. Customers want to know what next version is coming. Your dev team needs to know okay, when do I have to build? What do I have to build? What cool features do I have to build? Your your dependency team needs to know. Your finance team needs to know like what the next revenue target. Your sales team needs to know okay, which customer segment and what type of business that I can bring. So there are a lot of people surrounding you who are looking forward for uh, the launch to go big. So being in this quarter position, you have to have all of these listening systems, antennas activated. You have to engage with your customers on a regular basis. You have to build your backlog, uh, validate your backlog constantly. Keep researching on your support tickets. Can't emphasize this enough. Um, understand life site incidents. Why did why did even customer report a problem? Why didn't our infrastructure or monitoring didn't catch those issues in advance? And how can I improve that? Um, all of that should convert into a feature set and start putting in your backlog. So that will form your next version. Um, with that, I would conclude my session. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, and I'm happy to meet you all in um, Amy sometime soon. So thank you.